You know, we could all agree that the Game Awards of 2023 were kind of eh. But there was one game that caught a lot of people's minds. A lot of people didn't even know it existed. This game is the finals. Oh boy. This game I had no idea about. No idea. Until I played it. And needless to say, it's a game alright. So in this video today, I'm going to be going over why this game pisses me off on a completely different level. But I'm going to be level-headed here. I'm going to talk about what makes the game good and what makes the game bad, alright? So, let's just get this out the way. I'm going to be very harsh about this game. This game can improve, but Jesus Christ, this game has a lot of issues. So please, save your mean comments for another time. This game literally came out less than a month ago. I know it can change, but the state of it right now, not worth my time, so let's get into it. It's developed by a Stockholm-based studio known as Embark Studios. It made two games, one of them being the finals. The title was announced in August 2022 for PC with console ports later unveiled for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Closed betas were run in early 2023, with the first closed beta lasting from March 7th, 2021, 2023, and the second closed beta coming from June 14th to the 21st of the same year. An open beta also took place between between October 26th and October 5th. It was uh, released on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation 5 on December 7th during the Game Awards. That's it. That's literally it. We don't know too much about the development of this game. Somebody might have shit their pants in development. Somebody might have just maybe like, uh, like fucked up something. I, I don't know. But what makes this game unique? Well, it would be the destruction mechanics of the game. See, the destruction mechanics are very in-depth in this game, and there's a reason why it's actually praised. See, normally in games like this, you break something, you lag. But it's actually pretty innovative what they did. They rendered everything server-side. That way, your PC won't lag, and there won't be any lag in the game. Every environment in this game is destructible, which adds a layer to the game that makes it unique. But, what is the gameplay like? Well, let's get into that. So, firstly, let's just start with the basic gameplay. So, what is the finals, gameplay-wise? Well, the finals revolves around two game modes. The base modes of the game, the only two game modes in the game, are Cash Out and Bank It. See, Cash Out is considered the base game mode in the finals, and pits players that are formed in teams of three, which is basically nine players who are going 3v3v3, which compete to complete objectives consisting of opening vaults and transporting them to a Cash Out location. Aspects of these objectives take inspiration from Capture the Flag, requiring teams to have a control of the area to perform the desired action. The ultimate winner of the round is the team which collected the most money. The players can earn in-game currency by eliminating players, completing objectives, and other combat maneuvers. The finals has three major classes, light, medium, and heavy, with each player model changing to reflect that. Their abilities can also change their weapons and what they can carry in general. Now, I would go over all the options of classes but that would be pointless, as you'll see why later on. Game mechanics encourage emergent gameplay by the way of many free variables present. These include the highly player modifiable terrain, which involves destruction and limited construction. Varied weather conditions and the time of day are also impactful on the map itself, which can change between matches. The arenas contain items which are suspended from ropes, as well as items on the ground that can be picked up and thrown by the players. Entire buildings are potentially destructible if the correct supports are targeted. This can actually change the pace of the match. It's a really good idea. And you know what? The performance is actually really good on this aspect. So, gold star. Good job, finals. You did it. So the game does allow for limited construction, though, as it takes the place of temporary structures such as goo grenades and barriers that the players can shelter behind. Players who are killed are turned into statues, which their teammates can carry and use to revive them. If the reviving teammate has a defibrillator, the process is nearly instant. Otherwise, it takes approximately five seconds, but Jesus Christ, it feels like it takes longer, like, oh my god! You can also move the statue and throw it into cover, which actually is a very, very unique idea, as this is supposed to be marketed as a VR game, and that's a pretty good feature. 
A player, if not revived in time or team wiped, may choose to respawn themselves. Though this consumes a so-called respawn coin, and in some game modes, players have a limited amount of respawn coins. The other game mode is Bank It, otherwise known as probably the best game mode in the game. Bank It is simple. Kill enemies, go to a vault, and deposit it at one of the deposit stations that cycle throughout the game. This is the preferable game mode for this game. I will explain exactly why it is in the next segment. The meta in this game is abysmal. I cannot think of a single thing that makes this game have an excuse for how bad this meta is. SMGs, that's all I'm going to say. SMGs. These SMGs are completely broken, and that is a fact. Let me put this into perspective here for you. This gun is one of the most broken guns in the game. See, the point of an SMG is it's meant to do damage, but I don't think it's supposed to do that much damage. The gunplay actively affects the game in such a negative way that it's kind of funny. Remember how I said there were three classes? Erase the heavy and the medium. Just, just erase them. Because light is the only one you'll ever need to use. The SMGs in this game are some of the most broken guns in gaming, I swear. These guns, man. they I'm pretty sure they could be used as weapons of mass destruction. That's how strong they are. Half the people that we were playing against, in fact, I'd say maybe 75% of me and my squad's gameplay was against people that were only playing light and medium. There is a very clear meta in this game, and it's a very obvious meta. Use SMGs and play light. Movement in a video game should be fair and responsive. Let's take a game like COD, for example, here. People always complain about movement players in COD. Like, does this look like a fun type of player to you, these types of players? No, it isn't. And you know what? If you have a movement player in your game, that's not your fault. But in the finals, it is. You literally made a class that is a movement-based class. In a game where, well, I don't know, half the classes are fucking slow. This is like if Apex and Battlefield 4 had a homunculoid of a child. The light class in this game is the meta right now. And there is no reason playing cash out for that reason. You will just have the most sweaty person on the other team. And I get that's not the developer's fault, but it is in this situation because of how unbalanced the game is. But there's some other issues with the game itself that I'm gonna be going over here besides the gunplay and the classes. So let's talk about the maps. Let's talk about map design actually just good map design. Map design is something memorable. You can have a game that just came out and have a very memorable map. Look at games like Call of Duty. You have maps like Rust, which are recognized as a classic for its aesthetic, its play style, its flow. A map should flow right with the game and how you play. It just feels right when you find a map that you say, wow, I'm going to remember this map for the rest of my life. Name three maps in the finals. No, I'm serious. Name three. I bet you can't. The map design in the finals is pretty simple. Just make a series of rooftops with zip lines, jump pads, and places where light classes can grapple. I want you guys to repeat it with me here. The embarked philosophy. Zip lines, jump pads, grapples, zip lines, jump pads, grapples, zip lines, jump pads, grapples! That's every map in this game, I kid you not. The maps in this game are rushed, underdeveloped, they feel lifeless as fuck, and they're catered towards, get this, wait for it, light classes. And it's actually kind of sad. Maps in this game, if you're wondering, are Monaco, Las Vegas, Seoul, and, uh, um, yep, that's it. I bet you didn't expect that, did you? There are three maps in this game, and they all feel the same. If you put Monaco and Seoul next to each other, there would be like one difference I can tell. It's a game show. Do anything. So overall, this game has the most forgettable set of maps in any video game I've ever played. And before you say anything about how the game just came out, you can have memorable maps for a game that just came out. With the finals, it's been almost out for a month. You'd think people would be like, oh man, I love, uh, I love Soul. No, they don't. Because you want to know something? Because the game and its maps are uncreative. But let's just talk about other things, like, oh, a oh, one thing. 
So the finals is a free-to-play game. Sounds good on paper, right? Well, lately, the developers have been having an issue with cheating in their game. Many people are posting to region lock China. Now, if the game is free to play, anybody can play it, and there's bound to be some people that cheat in your game. According to many players, Chinese players in this game should be region locked because there is a massive wave of hackers from the Chinese region. A very valid argument. Uh, what, what does Embark do? They do nothing about it. And Embark doesn't really do much in terms of everything I talked about in this video. It's a shame because this on paper has nothing unique about it. This game has an identity crisis. I can't tell what this game wants to be a competitive shooter, an Apex Arena game. I can't tell. It's like this game wants to be the next esports game, but in reality, it has an identity crisis where I feel like one half of the team in Embark wants to make this game a Battle Royale game, while the other wants to make an esports shooter which is just, you need to be more creatively balanced in your team. You need to go together, listen to your community, and think to yourself, man, we should try to make this game's identity its own thing. I enjoyed this game when it launched, but then I started to see the flaws in the game. And it's sad, because I, I want to like this game, and you know, I'm, that's pretty much everything I had to say about this game. It's just, I don't know what it's trying to be anymore. Th this game will get better, I'm sure, but I cannot forgive the current state that it's in. Stay in the box! No! Stay in the box! No! Get out of my skin!